Welcome to March's Collective Energy Reading. My name is Faye and I'm from Your Heart's Path. And as a reader, a channeler and a translator of energy, I'm here today to deliver the foresight, insight and guidance into the month of March. I can't believe that we're already here. <laughs> There's some really beautiful themes coming in for this month. It's feeling hugely expansive. Uh, the energy leading into March has been pretty intense, so to speak. Yeah, I'm really feeling this energy uh, starting to make a lot of sense. Um, and I'm feeling underneath all of this like the weight is over. And so my guides are channeling in the reading today. I've made lots of different notes. So we'll travel through the themes, ultimately creating a big picture where all of these kind of link together and all as a means to empower you. So as a collective reading, there's lots of us. These things can manifest in different ways. So I encourage you to look at this symbolically. It might not be as specific as the way in which these themes are described. It can be the one element that we speak about in regards to physical uh, manifestation is sort of more showing up in your emotional um, but it can be you know we can be as specific as possible to make it resonate with as many of you with the language and the words that they obviously utilize um, or translate through me to be able to provide for you a reading that is as clear and accurate as it can possibly be by looking at the underlying theme so again it might be really intense for you some of these and some of them might just be minor so just kind of go for a little bit of a ride. Um, as I always say, you ultimately know your own internal guidance and your own truth. This really works to just create pockets of awareness so is that you have some tools to be able to navigate through this um, and to bring your own consciousness, um, expand into those places, into your heart if those challenges arise as to how you can kind of navigate through all of this. But ultimately, we're going to start um, with this theme around the wait is over. There are some things that uh, as an individual you may have been plucking away at, I want to say, have been in motion for upwards of 16 to 18 months and I'm kind of finally seeing that we get over the finish line here. And so this is very much in regards to people's purpose work um, projects and I want to say like making significant changes to let go of some particular themes in life that... You know, if you're transitioning jobs or something, um, it almost feels like, okay, there's enough going on here that I can step further away from the thing that's actually been draining me and more into this space of uh, safety and expansion now that I've tied off all of these loose ends. And so this has involved communication with other people. It can be setting up and just taking that risk and booking that place so as that you can run the event you've been talking about doing for 18 months, but logistics haven't been quite right. It's, it's sort of this feeling, uh, not only in regards to purpose work, but the wait is over as far as clarity arising from this place as well, so as that we can continue to take action. Action is feeling really creative at the moment. It's also feeling like um, if we don't act and respond to these beautiful intuitive hits and the energy that's inside of the body to move this through the system, through action as creation, that it's like an accumulated feeling of stress inside of the body. And it's really easeful right now just to flip the coin and be like, oh, this isn't actually anxiety in my system. This is the rush of, um, you know, my own internal joy trying to be released from my body and so I think this is really positive the wait is over some of this will happen in the first week for some of you and some of this will start to tie off towards the end of the month so I think that's really exciting congratulations because this has been a real exercise in endurance uh, self-belief and I want to say faith as well faith in the universe faith in your own ability to make huge impact here in the world it can be uh, they're just kind of putting a little train off into relationships as well. So those that have been having themes and relationships where there's been like resistance or you haven't been able to resolve something or it's the same kind of little like rusty piece that raises to the surface and you kind of like can't sort of seem to resolve something. I feel like there's going to be resolving some of these underlying themes that we've been journeying for the past sort of like 16 to 18 months. Moving on from that, they spoke about something. I actually didn't write this down. It was more just prior to set up. They spoke of the word oxidation, which was really interesting. Not too much specifically. And funny, they used a little thing around rust there. But when they looked at this, they wanted to bring it down on like a really micro level. 
And they started off like mixing things in front of my vision space. So as far as like artists and things go, people that are using elements to mix things together to create something brand new. Um, there's a really beautiful new insight into, I want to say creating things that are brand new. If you were an artist and your palette has been a specific array of colors to create um, a particular like vibration it almost feels like you can bring in another element here or remove something that you have been using and create something brand new so it's not necessarily the invention of new colors it's more just an invention of a new expression for you and so this is more specific in the artistry realm but they also show me this inside of the kitchen so this can be even manifesting just in your day-to-day -day life of like trying new recipes or having a strange um like making something at home quite intuitively and coming up with a brand new beautiful meal um, but then we can sort of extend this out. So this was like a really zoomed in lens. They said there's an opposition to this, not from a duality perspective, but also a mindfulness in what it is that we are mixing. And so they showed me this with like, is what are the other elements of your life coming together as a complementary uh, package or are there things that it's almost like something needs to go and other pieces need to come in or just one other element needs to come in. And that can actually be on a dietary level. It can be that you haven't been sleeping very well and you're making a hot drink at night time to bring you into a space of relaxation and peace. But then you realize that actually all you need to do is switch over your cocoa because the one in which you've been drinking is full of caffeine. And that's actually the reason why you're staying up at night. It's not because there is another issue going on. So it's almost like we've been creating. Um, it's like seeing it from the, the, another perspective where we've been actually creating the symptoms by doing the thing that we think is working for us. Yet there's just a couple of little implements that need to be changed in order to actually start to manifest and experience the desired outcome. So it's funny because they show me this like they're really like bringing in like pharmaceutical um, elements to this. Obviously, I've got to be mindful of how I address this. But the way in which I'm seeing it is like combinations of tablets or combinations of herbs or combinations of elements that come together that can actually be causing problems internally. Um, so there can be like a gateway to, to approach this from a different perspective. Say you've been given a medication that is supposed to support your thyroid and simultaneously it's actually chipping away and damaging your liver. You might find that there is another element that you can bring in to complement this and support the liver or that you actually remove this completely and get to the bottom as to why there is an issue here to be able to bring in a different form of support into your system in a way that is more harmonious and is not actually creating more toxicity or less sleep or, you know, something that is artistically boring, say. And so I feel this kind of like goes into skill sets and things as well. It's like removing ways we have been doing things to bring in a new way, which creates more ease. I feel this is in regards to energetic hygiene and stuff as well. I've heard a few people lately say to me, like, I just don't feel like my sage is strong enough. Like, I don't feel like it cleans the energy. It's almost just like a mental thing. So people looking for other ways and different tools to actually flip over what hasn't been working with a, like a brand new awareness of like oh actually that's just not strong enough for my newfound sensitivity I need to look at other ways of doing this and the other ways will come through and surface quite quickly it's almost just that we have those almost like little epiphany moments where that actually starts to come through so I think that's really beautiful this energy this month, moving on from the oxidization piece, I don't believe that there's any more information there. It'll translate, and this is really important, that symbolic piece that we spoke of in the morning, that can translate into many different ways of your life. So think about that in terms of like physical movement or how much food's going into your body and how much action or energy is actually being utilized. So it's like energy in, energy out. How do these compounds work together? Is it complementary as a whole? Um... And if it's not, what needs to go and what needs to come in? Um, and it feels like simple tweaking. This can be a really inspiring piece too. If you're running a business, it might be removing some offerings and bringing something else in. Um, but anyway, it sort of feels like it creates a little bit more sense of ease and overall complements their physical, mental and emotional well-being. 
it's really funny when this, I was going to Google what it is. You know, the second wind. I wasn't sure if it was the second wind or the second wing. I actually don't know in my humanness. But I, so I wrote both. Endurance provides second wind slash wing to progress through challenges that arise as we finally receive the deeper meaning symbolically. Endurance is really interesting because we are moving beyond the feeling of overall fatigue right now and recognizing that a lot of that fatigue in which we have been experiencing is such a beautiful thing because it's it's showed us what's not been working and where the tweaks need to be made. They said this, we've been doing the tweaking, but endurance is feeling like something that we're actually starting to enjoy. It's not like, oh, I have to endure this. I'm so exhausted and planning all this sleep and rest and I want to say like checking out of life it's like almost like we can start to get off and get excited about this element of endurance like I'm in this for the long run I'm in this because it's my mission I'm in this because my I, I can't not you know I am on a journey of xyz because it's it's so inspiring to me and I'm going to do whatever it takes and that's his feeling, I think, is and energy that's been really important, especially in regards to a spiritual path. This links very uh, deeply into this theme of acknowledging like pain and discomfort and challenges. And, and I feel like we've been loving ourselves as a collective more deeply through the discomfort as these like wounds in the collective that speak to alignment being something that is like no problems, no challenges, no pain, no trauma, no shame you know, no fear. And we are realizing as a collective in the middle of these wounds that it's bullshit. So it's like they start to get popped. And through that, there's like a leaking of, um, you know, there's kind of like a bit of a fog. I don't want to call it fog, like a bit of a sticky muck to move through in regards to that, because you can only really change these response or reactions to the discomfort in the moment in which they arise. But the invitation here is like, how deeply can I love myself? Can I keep my spirit in my body whilst I'm experiencing these waves of discomfort? They're not going to be weeks or days at a time. They actually just feel like small pockets throughout the day. They're literally saying from like 10 till 2, this thing arises and, and it's like, okay, but because we have this thing with time, which I'll talk of in a moment, there's this real opportunity to like see the through the illusion and stay with yourself and love yourself through that. And what that means is you're not abandoning yourself. You can listen and hear your intuition. You're not afraid of the feeling of discomfort or the challenges that arise. It's more of like, okay, cool. How can I love myself through this? And it might be that you ask your body and your being that, where can I bring in more love? What is it that I need? Call on the support. But we get an opportunity to not disconnect through the discomfort. But also long-term, that means that we release these expectations of actually trying to perfect everything and that we can only show up if xyz we can i'm only in alignment if xyz it's like this duality thing that i feel is like splitting through the middle and that we are seeing that the spiritual path is not necessarily even one that is easier it's just more true and true translates to i want to say light it does not have an agenda it is more pure and it allows for your true self as a match to start to settle into these places of your body and your being. I don't want to go too high there, so bring it back down, please. Thank you. <clears throat> so this is really cool. Endurance is a really beautiful quality and one that we need to and have to at some point in our time here on earth and on this spiritual journey, befriend in a sense and actually practice as an internal part of our character with a long-term vision to know that it's just a necessary part of being able to back yourself and back your journey and, and show up for what it is that's being asked of you, you know, from your own heart. Um, but making sure that we're taking care of the body so that it can do what it is that it needs to do. Physical emphasis. Um, this month they spoke of physical growth pains. That was the feeling, like, I'm just going to keep leave it there. Keep it simple. Dry mouth. <laughs> um, emphasizing the ears, the eyes, blood, feet, and knees. And I'm not sure why they're linking that with this, but I'm going to jump back over and link these two together. Because if we are looking at endurance, like kind of running a marathon versus doing a sprint, so the spiritual path is not a sprint, it's, it's more of a marathon, there are going to be pockets throughout that marathon where 
you're kind of in your training beforehand and then, then say it's something that you're on the road to do. You need to be able to feed your body. You need to be able to hydrate your body. You need to be able to listen to your body. If there are moments where you need to stop and catch your breath, obviously this is like basic stuff, but we have to be listening in and responding to what it is that the physical body is asking for in means of support, vitamins, minerals, etc. if we are going to endure. Express yourself is the next thing. <clears throat> I don't actually think that's a theme. I think I just wrote that down randomly. I'm going to say express yourself. And what that wrote underneath us was like, spiritualize the fuck out of everything right now. That is a very strange thing to say. And not as a bypass, but symbolically, we can have so many epiphanies and aha moments right now in regards to these things, like the challenges we previously spoke of, where you're like, holy shit, I can see now. And what that means is that we have awareness. We've bought what was unconscious into the conscious world, into the conscious mind, into the conscious reality, and we can shift. And there is all of this really beautiful energy, and it's been there in the backlight for a couple of months now, but it's it, it shows a way through uh, without the illusion there. Um, to express yourself feels like a very beautiful and healing journey at the moment. Um, a lot of this is, can feel like an internal process, but actually speaking out aloud right now, in relationships and to your guides, to through prayer, uh, with nature, uh, through sound, the voice. This feels like a development of will. Uh, that's the best way that I could translate this. Almost like acknowledging your own divine will and if there has been closure around expression, there's a real sense of, I want to say like an ego death that kind of arises in this to allow for where your expression hasn't been able to fully move through you because of the fear of other, because of the fear of rejection, because of the fear of the way in which it might be communicated. Um, it's almost, it's an external thing. It's less of a like, internally you might be like, well, I'm not really afraid to say that. What I am afraid of though is the reaction or the response or the conflict in exchange of that. But if this expression is coming really from your heart, then allow for it to just be without an expectation of a specific outcome. It feels very healing. There is quite a bit of heat around my throat when I'm talking in this area. So it can feel quite fiery and explosive. We may have moments that arise this month that feel like, whoa, that's really, really big. But we get this opportunity to reassess. I'm going to bring in this theme around timing because it feels quite elusive right now. It's almost like things can feel like we're at the end of March already. And then it can be like a day can feel like two weeks. And in that, with this kind of a time is an illusion. There are moments when these big explosive things happen where it can feel like a little reality around you literally just pauses. And for a moment, you've got this opportunity to kind of like dive in and around your body and your being and ask yourself, okay, what's a healthy expression of this? Or do I need to step away and close the door right now and just calm myself through this trigger? Or is this my rage or anger? Or, you know, it's sort of, we get to pause you can imagine like the thing is happening and then you stop and you're like, oh, whoa, whoa, time has stopped. But in that space, you've got this opportunity to kind of make those necessary changes. So the outward expression of this, uh, which feels like it's coming through the voice, can come from that heart center place and not just an explosion from the mind or a reaction from the past. It feels very present and it allows for your beautiful wisdom to shine through. They're saying like it's key, actually, which is really interesting. They're showing me like a silver key, which I really, really like. Spiritualizing this allows you to see the deeper meaning. So we really are looking at symbolic sight at the moment. It's something I'm obviously a little bit biased of because, on a, um, you know, from this perspective, it really just shows us the way through even when things are uncomfortable. When we know there's a meaning, we have a heart connection to this thing. It offers and provides value. And with the value for you and other, it allows for you to continue to transform with this expression, it can feel a little clumsy. Clumsy was this theme that I really liked. It felt kind of cute. It's like new territory. And I don't know, it's like learning to walk in heels for the first time. Or um, I want to say like, 
going like joining a group and going bushwalking and and kind of turning up in the wrong shoes but knowing that it's kind of right and was spontaneous and it feels good and so you're sort of it can feel almost like a sense of awkwardness i want to say like almost a little bit of embarrassment but embarrassment is a really beautiful thing it's like oh i'm being seen or i'm, oh, I'm vulnerable in this experience but actually it's underlying with a sense of joy it's like a response from the heart space in itself and there's this really beautiful courage shining through this does relate to us being able to see and have this perspective of how other we have allowed as individuals for other people to um our, our lack of boundaries with other people or our fear of other people that's kind of how we relate to others and where that has affected our overall expression or action or participation in life and so when we can see this it's like the ego um, and it's not allowing the heart to take these actions, it can be a really beautiful and profound time for trying new things, um, seeing what happens if you just give it a go. Um, you know, I like this energy for dating. There are some things around relationships here right now. I think there needs to be some mindfulness in regards to that. But the way in which you relate to other is going to be almost like you have that they're showing me like a, a magnifying glass. You will be able to see the small and hear the smaller threads of doubt or lack of self-worth or where you've been giving your power away externally as a means to kind of keep yourself small. <clears throat> There's a lot of understanding as well with this, like understanding where that came from. So like memories from your childhood, stuff you learned from your parents, things that you learned at school, um, you know, that like rewiring of programming, so to speak. It actually feels quite heavy in my body when I'm talking about it. So I think I've addressed it in quite a light way. It may manifest as something quite challenging for you. Um, and sometimes these things are really good to talk through, like to go find someone that does a little bit of um, subconscious, um, I want to say like debunking and programming and, and some assistance bringing what you're noticing from your inside world to your outside world and really having a look at it and with the assistance of somebody putting words to what it is that you've been experiencing it can be very healing at this point in time almost feel like hypnotherapy those sort of more somatic journeys um, even just like talk therapy like talking these things through because we have this beautiful window to be able to go into these softer more mushy places and and actually there's some kind of clumsy expression out the other side of that, but it's very permission giving and, and really quite sweet. Um, so like unafraid to kind of get it wrong. Um, unafraid to get it right. There's an element of like fear of success in regards to this as well. Like what would it actually mean for your friendship circle if you were to go and live in... A different place that you've always wanted to live but you've been afraid because you don't want to upset or leave behind um, your role as the supporter for your immediate friendship group yep this is a thing that if everybody here was okay you would definitely go it can be weird laws sort of little things like that again how do you symbolically translate these themes into your own life to work with them they can manifest in different ways <laughs> Obviously, this is a, like a bit of a, you know, illusion is something that really comes up in Pisces seasons, not in astrology, but we pick up on the same kind of themes collectively. Sometimes they just manifest the language that translates them are a little bit different. Seeing through the illusions is a really beautiful thing because it's a returning of the power. When we see through illusions, we have this relationship with our heart that opens. And what that means is because where we have an illusion, we're actually kind of giving our power away. The spirit goes to the illusion creates confusion it makes the means that the actions that we're following through with the truth is not necessarily in alignment and so when these illusions start to kind of part it means that we kind of have like that epiphany and we're like oh shit and and the spirit comes back into the body it's a more heart-centered approach to your long-term journey with this beautiful endurance that has been cultivated with the ability to be able to express really easily to communicate i want to say like that emphasis with prayer and all these other things like when illusions melt away or we see through or we receive that symbolic meaning and that value there is a heart expansion ultimately there is more energy in your heart you are more connected to your own internal truth and so it creates an element of power within look at where you might be um afraid of success look at where you might be 
afraid of uh, afraid of succeeding, afraid of expansion, afraid of getting it right, afraid of the repercussions of abundance. The it's it's almost like we look at that like of why would we be afraid of some of these things? But I think that that's really important. And in the regards to calling back the power, when the power is there, it's going to give energy for creation through action. I love that. Dreams. There's an abundance of messages coming through in dreams. It's going to feel kind of weird, but what they said in specifically, look at your unconscious perspectives. That's what this was. I'm not going to go into that and break that apart anymore. Even the characters in your dream, it's almost like don't look at those like they're other characters or textures or experiences. Don't look at them like it's outside of you. Look at this like it's inside of you. And what perspectives are showing up in your unconscious that may be affecting your outer reality as an internal belief that might have been like squished down. Great time, obviously, always to be able to learn to translate your own dreaming through symbology, but also I want to say just even through journaling, like writing it out and seeing how it bridges into your your waking life. Um, so setting that beautiful intention, obviously, always before we go to bed to remember your dreams and your outer waking consciousness. It's a really beautiful practice. If you have no conscious awareness whilst you are sleeping or no remembrance of your, your dreaming, you can place something next to your bed as a reminder. I've got this like little wooden thing here. This is not what I use this for. But say that this is your reminder to make that intention before you go to bed. And then before you even open your eyes, recall your dream experience. And perhaps you have your pen and paper there and you just write down a couple of little notes because they do kind of trickle out of the awareness if we're not stretching this, uh, stretching, I want to say like practicing or flexing this muscle um, to bridge that into our waking life, I guess. It is a practice, but intention is very powerful when it comes to dreaming. There's a few more here. Expanding into what you do have with the understanding spiritually, everything is already here. I'm just going to brush up against that quickly. I think it's a nice little reminder. With this expansion that we spoke about, like through the heart, where that room, the power comes back into this place, the heart gets to expand. There's a real, like a greater trust that even though it can feel like you don't have everything you need or you can't see it, I'm not going to say feel, it feels like and you know that you have everything that you need in order to take this creative action. This may... <laughs> I'm just, this is not for everyone, just including turning away from the drainers was a line. Um, I think that is really important. Yes, people that drain your energy are part of something that is like, it's, it's still a part of your learning and something here to teach you. Yes, it's kind of got to do with boundaries, but sometimes we can get energies that just pull more, um, we need to be really diligent with this because your life force energy, that beautiful expansion, if if your creative energy is not thriving, I would ask what your is literally happening inside of your physical reality, where you're spending your time and who you're spending your time with and whether you leave that space feeling the same, whether you feel leaving completely depleted, whether you feel drained for periods after, how clear is your connection and disconnection practice with your client work or with your students or with your family. Um, turning away from the drainer sounds really harsh, but it actually feels like that. It's like, I'm just done with this. Like the body just kind of turned away and it was like, I got to go in this direction. I'm sorry if you don't want to come on this path with me. I love you and I let you go. Beauty is really funny. I think beauty is something I love. I'm a Taurus rising, so I it, it's it's really interesting. But this feels like beauty in a form of like quirky expressions. This is a great month for artists, by the way. Great month for new inventions when it comes to like new makeup trends or bridging fabrics together. I think there's going to be some weird and wonderful things coming through in this space. Um, it almost feels like a, a designer's dream, uh, like dreaming new ideas, dreaming new ways, dreaming new textures, colors, styles. It's like a cosmic download. Even fashion seems to go through. It's like, oh, we're back in the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, the 20s, the 40s. It's like, okay, cool. We're kind of just recycling these things and doing them in another way. What about like brand new expressions? 
Um, this can also just be quirky things that help you feel like you're expressing yourself on the outside as a match to how you feel on the inside. We brush against these seams momentarily. I found this like, <laughs> I'm going to grow my mono brow out. Um, I know that sounds like everyone told us just like, why would you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. It just feels really fun. It feels fun. It feels quite freeing to me. Um, so I'm going to let this roll. I only plucked one big hair out of the middle that was longer than all of the rest, but I've been even putting my um, like castor oil stuff on my face in here to like stimulate the growth of the hair in that way. It can be like things to do with your hair. It can be just like, you know, bugger. I've had this dress stashed in my cupboard forever and I've always been too like nervous or, you know, felt weird to wear something like that. And this month I feel like just do it. Go out there and see what happens. Um, expression, this can feel like, you know, like writing poetry or I don't know, making a little jam or writing a rap song or just like going to those places. It doesn't have to be for anyone else. This just really can be just um, like creative expression through beauty in your own internal life, like doing a mural on your bedroom wall or I don't know, it kind of feels brave, um, but it feels really quirky. The zebra always comes in when there's this beautiful quirky feeling and that's the characteristics of this energy in which I'm trying to describe trying to and describing um crossroads for some people i it's it's sort of it's interesting because i say that i feel like it comes away from everything we've just spoken of but on the flip side to that it may be that you're on a spiritual journey but there are other people in your immediate life and i want to say like shining a light deliberately more on like family or long-term friendships where there's just a feeling of like it growing apart is that this is like a big energy for like leveling up right now. And you, people have free will not to do that, not to continue to grow, not to take care of their health, not to take care of their well-being, not to get the support that they need. It's not our job to kind of do that for other people. Um, so it feels like not just the turning of the back away, this feels sort of separate. It's a crossroads for some people and some people are going to go in a direction in which you as an individual might not feel like is the right choice for them with a different perspective but we've got to allow people to do this love them anyway love them how they are how deeply can you love somebody in their what you might judge as poor decision and don't feed the poor decision or the worry or the you know feeling as though you have the right to kind of assess how you may do life if it was for them because we have to understand from that bird's eye view that everybody comes in with their own internal blueprint and there will be opportunities for these beautiful souls to come back in and do this again and perhaps they choose differently and perhaps they don't but it is their free will so there's an honoring of free will for those who go in a direction that you might have otherwise guided them in if they were to come to you for support this actually helps with um that feeling of like keeping your power inside of your internal body, unless this person obviously comes to you and says like, what do you, what do you feel about this? You know, I don't need to educate you about all of that, but it's just an interesting perspective because you may see people go in directions that you might be seeing or feeling as perhaps not the healthiest option. Yet there's kind of a feeling of just like bring as much love into that space as you possibly can. Uh, feeding and sending someone worry is only going to drain their energy and your own. So have compassion. Uh, I know you're all compassionate beings, every single one of you that turn up here. I know that you're all sensitive. I know that you're all intuitive. And I know that most of you have the ability to be able to see some of these things symbolically. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we intervene. Um, we just have to love people wherever they're at. Um, yeah. Beautiful question. How does illusion feel in your body? I know that we're bouncing back around some of these things because illusion is one of those things that we're busting through right now, but this is a key little takeaway. Maybe this is something you meditate on. How does illusion feel in your body? If you can identify what illusion feels like in your body, you will know it down the track when it arises and you go, oh, there's an opportunity here to dive into my subconscious and bring into my conscious awareness that in which is untrue so as I can bring love to this space and call my power back. You can bring color to this. You can bring sound to this. You can bring texture and feeling like, where do I actually feel this in my body? What part of my energy? Where is it being drained to? Where am I being pulled to? How do you remain inside of your body 
uh, through the, ob it's more of an observation exercise. Your body will tell you these things if you ask it this question. So that was a question and a little bit of a takeaway for some of you and for, and not for other. Some of you have like nailed this one. Um, illusion is something that you, you cultivate a relationship with to some degree where you know when it's showing up in your life or you can see it in other people's. Um, but again, a beautiful opportunity to transform, um, come to peace with, uh, allow, something else to rise from that space and calling your power back in between. I'm going to end this on the final theme. Um, they use the words from I to we. Uh, I feel like that is really, really important. It had uh, luck in collaboration and there is a bit of luck coming in this month. Um, I can see the like Jupiter rings. It feels almost like this feeling like there is an element of expansion. So miracles can happen. Look for miracles in the ordinary parts of your life as well. It doesn't have to be huge, big things. It's all those little things that add up. Um, but it felt like luck in co collaboration. Uh, it also felt like a balancing of the energy, like your needs being met. If you're a mother and you've got, you know, a few kids, but also your friend lives down the road and, and they've got a few kids, you know, maybe you could do like, I'll look after the kids for half a day and then you could look after the kids for half a day. So that you've got some spaciousness to have some time for yourself. It's like implementing little bits where community or collaborating come together to share the load where I feel like people's geniuses can pop through and you don't have to like have the weight of the world on your own shoulders. So this is about making more ease, but it's also for creative like channels to meet and birth something brand new. So it's, um, it is projects. It is asking for help when needed. And it is also group consciousness. If this is not about physical contact for you, it can really be in relation to your guides. So where is it that I can collaborate with my spirit guides or with the earth or with the stars or with my astrology map or with these beautiful resources and tools from the non-physical realms to support the physical? They brought in things around this, around maps, geography and expansion as well. Um, I thought that was really cool. I feel like there's a lot of people looking at like ways to go and adventure and explore right now. This feels in relation to that. I almost feel like traveling to go and do a special event or participate in a retreat or go to the desert or it's like traveling um and there's a planning going on for that right now so listen to your intuitive hit some of this is going to feel a bit far out or like oh that's a bit far or how am i going to make that possible but it feels very joyful and very playful the earth calls different people to different sections of her being for different downloads different upgrades different work to be done underneath the grids for you to go there and receive pockets of information if you're not um traveling you know aren't by, I want to say like by locating your consciousness elsewhere to do that on an energetic level. It's really necessary sometimes to follow through with those physical opportunities that happen in regards to a change of culture. Um, it also really emphasizes and helps people remain really present. Again, open for new experiences with this expansion. You may be pulled and called to go somewhere else. Check that it's not an illusion. Where is that pull coming from? Where is that, you know, is it illusion? Is it for me? Um, I found that really interesting. I had an experience once and I was being like called to go to Bali. And um, the question that was asked of me when we were speaking about this was, where is the pull of that inspiration coming from? Or where is that inspiration coming from? So just locating it. And these are things that we talk about more in um, like the group containers in which I'm taking or intuitive development stuff. So if this is a bit beyond you, it's okay. It's room that you can always expand into. But if you've got this awareness already, you can be like, okay, where is the source of that information coming from? You can actually see where the pull was. It wasn't a, lo a loving pull for me to go there at that point in time. It was actually an energy intervening manifesting as a point of uh, inspiration. So that's just a really beautiful practice. That doesn't mean there aren't inspiring things coming through. I really do believe that there is right now. I think the adventurous, the brave explorers, my friend would call it, that kind of archetype um, is kind of coming through right now, along with the magician and some other really beautiful things that I think we're going to be seeing this month. Um, but intuition is high. It's a really, really magical time. That is everything that I'm going to be covering um, as far as themes go for the month of March with that little bit of foresight and the guidance. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. I have a invitations going out for the House of Mystics in the next week or so. I'm just waiting for the technological stuff to be sorted in the background so that all of and the systems in place so is that 
um, payment plans and those sorts of things can be offered to those who uh, feel more ease with that. But the House of Mystics is going to be a group community. It is a group community of sensitive beings and I'm creating this from the lens of what it was that I needed when the veil was stripped for me. Um, all the tools and the resources. So this is going to be a huge deep dive into clairvoyance and third eye seeing. We're going to look at all of the clairs specifically. There's going to be channeling pieces. Um, it's intuitive living. So we will be looking at movement, the way that we feed ourselves, our relationship to our spirit guides and our higher self. There's going to be sort of more taboo topics. I'm getting some really beautiful guest speakers in to hold some workshops and some classes in regards to extraterrestrial communication. Um, I'm going to do a pleasure section. Um, there will be clearing techniques, energetic hygiene. It's kind of the whole package. And so whilst I've created a bit of a system from week to week, we will have at least one live call a week. There'll be meeting points fortnightly where we come together and share a coffee. This is all done online and we can do some Q&A from the challenges that have arisen from the practices and the information that's come through or just to be able to debrief and get to know one another. Um, and I am... Uh, pausing one-on-one -on -one intuitive developments through this process is it's going to be a six-month um, home really where we can meet regularly and I can support you through the evolution and expansion of your spiritual gifts but the integration of your intuitive listening and guidance is a skill set that is very readily available to everyone no matter how far along your journey of becoming conscious uh, and then there's going to be these beautiful spots for like mystery workshops where my guides are going to channel in different things that are really specific for the group. So sort of just feeling on how and where you're all at and, and what it is that we can teach and share in that space that's really suitable. So I am so excited about this. Um, it's a pretty big commitment and it's also a really beautiful one. I guess the beauty in this for you as um, a participant is that you won't need to remember everything, but it will be structured in a way that the bits that you do implement into your life, you will have access to all of this information, the videos, the workshops. You can download them as we go onto your own PC so that you can revisit these two years from now, three years from now. Yet there'll be complementary pieces that continue to help shift your awareness and bring more of you into this world. So my focus isn't to turn you into a magician. It's really about becoming who you are, tuned in and tapped into your intuitive guidance with a relationship to your spiritual gifts and then ultimately not about fixing, but how do we move through the challenges, the pain and the obstacles that sh inevitably show up in the spiritual path as an invitation for expansion, as an invitation for growth, as an invitation as part of your purpose. Uh, I always feel like purpose kind of comes from your pain in some kind of a way. The things that you have journeyed, that you have a, an understanding through on a cellular level that you can be a transmitter of to other people. So um, whatever it is that your purpose is, it nudges into that because you are becoming more of you throughout this journey. And so I'm just really excited about that. Most of that information is going to be coming through my email list, uh, which you can find on my website. Or you can contact me on Instagram if you have any questions about this. As I said, it'll be about a week until the um, electronic stuff is done and we get this ball rolling as far as enrollment goes but it starts on April 2nd that is a Sunday uh, here in Tasmania so depending on where you are in the world I know there's lots of you from all different places I'm going to do my best to schedule these live meetings and calls at a couple of different times so is that you're able to make some of these live sessions and some of that's going to be slightly flexible as well so is that we can at least meet you know, once a fortnight as a whole group to have a bit of a discussion and check in. There'll also be a Telegram group, which will be support through text message, where you can kind of have a chat with each other. It can just be reflection pieces. Again, it's not about me fixing and healing. It's about showing you and teaching you different tools, techniques, um, and the expansion of the awareness to really keep you in a place where you feel empowered. Um... Yeah, so that's it. And I was a bit of a spiel about that. It's called the House of Mystics. The mystic is the translator of um, 
the universe and so learning that symbolic sight and learning the way in which it communicates us that we're constantly in relationship with that in support of our evolution and our growth and this is an this is a a deep dive into your own soul but it will also begin to show you how you can contribute and continue to contribute to the lives of other people around you whether that is through your service work or the mother or a father or a friend um as a student here on earth so I'm very excited about that. Thank you for being here with me today. It felt like a really beautiful, clean and clear transmission. I feel excited about this energy. Um, so we shall endure. Sending you so much love. Thank you for your presence, awareness and attention. And I will see you next month. Goodbye.